listening to it. Hope you were doing well today. Here's another rendition of Zephyr 101. It's been a while, so um, excited to be here. Let me make sure I got sound. Oh yeah, we're good. Um, so we're gonna jump right into it. This week is a uh, a community request, um, and this is mostly we're talking about creating your own board. And what we're going to be doing is using an already existing board to like kind of create a foundation for your own board. Um, and this is this board is going to live out of tree. So the idea, idea of something being out of tree is out of the Zephyr repo and um, gives you some flexibility. You can create a board anywhere, really, alongside your application code, tweak it, change it, update it as you need to. You don't need to submit pull requests or anything like that. Just kind of built into your project, which is really nice. So we'll we'll we'll. You won't get notified. Notified. So make sure you do that. Uh, here is. I just cut myself off here. There we go. Um, this one's from Leo. It says, how do I move from a prototype on a development kit to my own custom board? And uh, let's let's jump into it here. So you have some working code and maybe you're using development kit or maybe just like an, another board that you can buy off the shelf and you're like, all right, cool. I, I wanna move this project to the next stage and you want to target your own hardware. So you want to create some out of tree board definitions that can live with your application, kind of what I was describing before. The the code and the board definitions can live together thanks to how Zephyr is organized, but we're going to focus on modifying the most important things that will allow your code to kind of live and coexist with an out of tree board definition. So let's do it. Uh, there's not much in the West YAML file. I don't know why I, I included it just as an asterisk, but mostly it's just making sure that if your board does some dependencies like the NR9160, NR9161, ARNR53 as well, I believe, anything that just doesn't work uh, by itself in vanilla Zephyr, you're going to have to make sure those d uh, dependencies are there. So in this case, this is just adding NCS to the West YAML file. Um, on another note, I don't, I didn't really mention this, but when you do create, uh, when you do create these board files, these board definitions, let's say you have another project, you have to make sure that you include that uh, that uh, repository in your West YAML if it isn't already included in there. So, but we can we can talk about that towards the end. So the, the secret of Zephyr is this module.yaml file, <clears throat> and it lives in the Zephyr folder in the root of your project directory. And this basically says, hey, I have board files here, I have drivers here, I have whatever you can think of. Uh, this is where you're saying, hey, Zephyr, look here to see if there are anything, there's anything that you need to build my project. And um, it's located, and like I said, in that Zephyr module.yaml. And this is located in the root of your project. So important thing to note is if you have code or application code that's currently in the root of your project, which is entirely possible, you definitely want to move that out. So I'll talk about that in a second. But literally, this is the entry to allow you to look for boards. That's all it is. So you need just a folder called boards, uh, and we'll go into the, the directory structure a little bit because it is important. But this is where you're putting your board definitions, like super, super easy. Uh, this is what I was just talking about, is make sure you have your application moved over into a separate folder. It really can be any name, whatever you want. Um, in my case, I just like using app 
but uh, like for instance, if I have projects that have multiple uh, multiple applications, so if, say you have an NRF52 which has the HCI firmware on it, and then you have an NRF9160 which has the rest of the application code on it, I like putting them in their own their own folders. Um, that's just the way I like organizing it. So Zephyr is very flexible. I'm not very opinionated on how you organize your code, so it's kind of like up to you and how you do it. So, but this is kind of how I would do it. That boards directory is the is where your uh, overlay is going to exist. I I moved all the application code into that app folder. Um, the YCML needs to stay in the root of the folder, so Zephyr knows it's there. And then that Zephyr folder in includes that module.yaml. <clears throat> So what we're going to do here is use the already existing board definitions in Zephyr or in a different repository, whatever exists, whatever you're using, and we're going to basically copy it over and use that as the foundation for your custom board or maybe an, another board that might not be develop, or developed in Zephyr or available in Zephyr, so you kind of building off something that already exists. I did it with the NR9160. I used it, uh, I compared some notes with um, Nordic about how they, they did their development kit. So I just kind of worked off of that. Um, but a de development kit is definitely a good way to start. <clears throat> For example, here is the NR52833 development kit. And this is currently in the Zephyr repository, the vanilla Zephyr repository. And these are all the files that are involved in the process, so they're all important. Uh, if you are using anything that has a, the um, ARM secure capabilities, so uh, the NRF9160 NRF has that, the NRF53, uh, you'll have a bunch of other entries in here with the underscore NS at the end of it, so you'll actually have kind of like duplicates, duplicate, duplicate configurations to some extent. Um, another thing for the NRF9160 is that the you have the ability to set like the partition table to some extent in in the overlay or your board definition, but uh, for the NRF9160, it actually gets kind of uh, dynamically created during comp compilation by some Python scripts in NRF SDK. So this is going into the weeds here, but these are just some things you just got to think about and um, know about before you start creating boards. In this case, for the NR52, most of these kind of single core processors, uh, it's really simple just to kind of copy over and start using it. So <clears throat> you can copy over, so copy, you can copy that over that full path. So you want to make sure that you're including, if you look back here, you can see there's an there's a folder called ARM in boards, and then you actually have the folder of the name of the board that you're using, and this is the development kit. Um, that ARM folder is pretty important. That just kind of categorizes the processor type by whatever it is. So um, if you if you go and explore in Zephyr's boards directory, you'll see like Extensa and ARM and whatever else architectures that exist is supported by Zephyr. So um, you can copy over the full directory and move it over to your project and it'll end up in whatever boards architecture board name. So in, in this case, we're copying everything over to boards ARM NR52833, blah, blah, blah. Um, and this is living in your project. And what we're gonna do is kind of rename it in the next step to whatever you want to name it. Um, when I was looking through Zephyr, when I was creating my board for the first time, I was like, oh, how, how is this other, how are the formats doing and for other people? And some people just like name, it's just the name of the board. Um, I did NRF9160, or Circuit Dojo, NRF9160 Feather, uh, just in case there's any other NRF9160 feathers. So it's for you, and if, if it's living it outside of the main, main, you know, main Zephyr, if it's living out of tree, you can kind of name it whatever you want. Just make sure you do not name it the same as something else. So that's, that'll be, that's my warning to you. That's all it is. Uh, here's what it looks like when you're actually done, like, when I started renaming things. So just renaming it to make sure that they're all consistently named the same. So those are only the files that were named like the NRF52DK, blah, blah, blah. 
just renaming those. But in, inside all the files, we actually do have to make some modifications to make sure it works. So for instance, we're kind of like renaming the identifier here. To, uh, we're kind of copy and pasting. If you look over there on the left, I'm doing kind of like a cop, a find and replace all within the folder, within the files. There's some other things like under that, um, that name in that YAML file. The YAML file is not as important as, mo it, but um, how, changing everything over to match is, uh, is handy. So for instance, in the kconfig.board, the original uh, that config file or config name or that config entry name there we go was called like board underscore nr 52833 dk blah 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 so we're just changing that over to match um, changing the description of the boolean to your board name things like that uh, changing you know the comments and changing this this was a conditional that was using the existing um, that config that was just here. So we just need to make sure it's renamed, um, changing the board name. Like for instance, uh, that board variable, so config underscore board is is a uh, is a macro that you can use within your code, especially if you want to log and show, uh, show what, whatever board is actually running at the time. So you definitely want to change that, update it f to match your custom board. And the, def uh, the default config file here. We just want to make sure that is also up to date. So there's a lot of just like renaming and make sure that everything's consistent with your, with your project and with the name of the board that you chose. And that's just kind of setting the stage for if you want to start making modifications. So I'm updating the name here. Uh, but once you have it all, all changed over, what you can do is, especially if you're using the DK, uh, you can change, you can, instead of building with the DK name, you can change it over and use yours. Make sure it compiles correctly because I have run into issues in the past where it's like, oh, this is, I didn't change over one of the variables or I didn't rename everything correctly and then it kind of barfs. So uh, just make sure before you start making crazy changes that you kind of run a build, If you, especially if you're basing off a of DK, just change the name over to your, your custom board. Make sure it compiles, works okay. Uh, I would even commit it if you have, um, if, to make sure like okay I'm starting from a stable place and then you can start modifying those files so I, I've done plenty of episodes about making changes to um, overlays and uh, k configs so I'm not going to go into it too much depth here but uh, one thing you just want to keep in mind is if you're working on a project or you're creating a board and the difference or the differentiation between an overlay and the, the actual board DTS files and the config files, <clears throat> anything that's more permanent that will be kind of like, it'll sustain over time. That's just a feature of the board that's just going to be there forever. You just want to make sure that that is in your board definition. Anything you're doing to modify for that specific, uh, the specific project, you just want to do that in your overlay in your uh, you're both both your overlays so that your dot overlay for your uh, your DTS and your dot conf overlay and those live in the application folder and under boards and those kind of overwrite whatever already exists so uh -huh. so we've uh, we've modified the application to accommodate out of true driver so if you already had a repo we can move the application code over and then create a place where we can put the board, the custom board definition. We've updated and added a module.yaml to make sure that you that Zephyr knows where to look for a new board definition. Uh, we used the DK or existing board as a starting reference. We kind of copied everything over, renamed it to whatever you want it to. I mean, you can also keep it the same if you really want. It's really up to you. It's very uh, flexible. Actually, you can't keep it the same name. Because it'll 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 be bad bad news bears, but um, make sure you do rename it to something else. Uh, but it doesn't need to be anything specific. It doesn't have to follow a specific naming uh, kind of naming the way you name things. But uh, you can kind of name it whatever you want, and then uh, modify to your liking. Make permanent changes within the board definition, and then if you have any changes that are just app specific, you just do those in your overlays. So. That was a mouthful, but that's it.
So if, um, if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe at jaredwolf.com. should be there on the homepage. I send out emails whenever I do these live sessions and I kind of just let everybody know what's going on. Um, I am, uh, I am also building, building out in the open to some extent. We are working on the next version uh, or the kind of next iteration of the NRF 9160 Feather. That will still exist, at least for now, uh, for the foreseeable future, but uh, Nordic has some cool ships coming out, and are, are the one's already out, so NRF 9161, which is kind of like the next generation, and then there's also the, the next one after that, so I'm, I'm kind of excited about that. Um, but if you'd like to see kind of building out the open, um, maybe I'll do some videos on it too, but let me know in the comments. Uh, let me see if there are any questions. I have you know, one. Just live you, just saying hi. Hi, good to see you. Um, so that is about it for today. If you guys have any other suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and see you on the next one.